Good evening, everybody. I'd like to go ahead and get the meeting started tonight, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the March meeting of the Laconia Zoning Board of Adjustments. Uh, with that, would you call the roll, please? Uh, Stephen Lothrop? Here. Gail Ober? Here. Roland? Yeah. Here. Here. Okay, I'd like for that to let the record indicate we have a quorum. Now, normally we have five people here, so I'm gonna make an offer, like I do in general to the public that, that is here, if you have an application before us. Let me explain what three people quorum does. If your applicant, application is heard tonight, you would have to have, if it's for an approval, you would have to have three affirmative votes. If you get two affirmative votes and one denial or one nay, then your application fails. Okay. So, with that being said, I generally make an offer to, if you want to have your application heard tonight, we'll go ahead and hear it. If you would like to have it moved to the next meeting, now will be an opportunity because once we start, that opportunity is gone. Okay, we will hear it. So, is there any applicant tonight that would like to have their application moved to the next meeting where there might be more people? more on the board because normally we have five with one alternate so we usually have six people here so that's my general offer everybody wish to be heard tonight okay I'm gonna take that as a yes because once we start there's no oh I'd like to move it so it is what it is, okay? All right. Second thing is we're going to be respectful to each other in a, a, a good manner so that uh, if you have questions and stuff, you address it to the board. You'll be asked in the public if anybody from the public wishes to be heard. You'll have that opportunity to speak at that time, but please hold yourself into that, okay? With that, Next to be uh, the minutes. Has everybody got a chance to review the minutes? Yes? Huh. Any changes? Any modifications? No. There being none, a motion to accept as is. I make that motion. Second. Mm -hmm. So, the minutes have been accepted. <clears throat> Three, zero. Okay. Next, we're gonna go into extensions. We have three different extensions. We can hear them all at once, and then we'll have to vote on them individually. Okay? Uh, the applicant wanna come up and Good evening, uh, Chris Dupree on behalf of the applicant. Um, this, uh, I was uh, before this board in July, um, and uh, then since then uh, back to the planning board. Uh, you know, we're kind of on alternating cycles here. I come twice, twice to you folks, once to the planning board. Uh, in, in October, the planning board granted us a one-year extension. Um, I was due to be here in January. I, I filed late for the January meeting, was put to the February meeting, and that was rescheduled due to a snowstorm. So it's March, and hopefully I'll be back and see you in a few short months in July. But um, anyway, our, our situation uh, pretty much remains the same there uh, in terms of trying to get this project started. We do have one construction item left to finish, uh, which is the extension of a sidewalk on Scenic Road. 
uh, which we hope to do this spring, uh, and get that taken care of. But um, otherwise, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Anybody have any any other major changes or anything that? No, uh, we're we're in a sales mode now on on the existing inventory, and um, we got a little pave you know finished paving to do on on the last townhome project this spring to get that to be 100% and signed off on. Okay. So we have no questions, Mr. Chair. Okay. So we'll go ahead and I don't need to open these up to the public, so. All right, we'll go ahead and vote on uh, Aqua uh, Waterfront 63-99 Fletcher Lane Area Variance Extension Requested. What would be the new date for that extension? Do we know? It would be, I think it's July. July. Yep. For an extension till July. I'll make that motion. We got a second. Second. We got a second. All those in favor? Okay, that one passes. Okay, uh, Aqua Waterfront 63-99, Fletcher Lane Special Exception Extension requested. Well, I, I move we grant the extension for um, 63 through 69 Fletcher <coughs> Lane Special Exception Extension request. And that will also be till July? Uh, yeah, until July. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Passes. Aqua Vista LLC Special Exception uh, 64 Scenic Road Special Exception Extension. I make a motion. We, um, we uh, grant the extent special exception extension for 63 scenic road for Aqua Vista LLC until July. Second. So, I believe that should read 664. I'm sorry, 664. Yes. I, Good catch. <laughs> I, I amend my motion. Thank you. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Yep. Okay, that passes. Thank you Thank very you. much. Continued public hearings would be next. We have no continued public hearings. Uh, next to be, or open it up. We're opening up our public hearings for the public to provide input. The board may also deliberate the application. The first application is 0002 variance 485 Endicott Street East a variance application request a variance from section uh, 7 section 235 35 side set back to allow for addition to the existing house would the applicant please come forward explain what you are would like to do and tell us how we may help you Hi, I'm Mallory Morse. Um, my family's been in Laconia for about 22 years now, and we don't want to move. We really like being in this area, but our family's just got continued to get bigger, so we just need some more space so we can stay in the area, and we're hoping to, yeah, just give up our family a little bit more space <laughs> to keep coming up. Can you bring the mic a little closer? Yeah, sorry. Don't mean to repeat anything. So how far into the side set? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a, yes. a technical question mm -hmm. before we go on. Could you say your first name again? Yes, it's Mallory. Mallory, are you a property owner? My father is, Robert father Morris. Is, mm -hmm. um, is that technically okay for her to represent the property owners? Yep. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. No I, there, there are some rules. Of course. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> sorry, was there a you had a question. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. No, that's fine. It's unit 16 we're talking about? Yes, so we're an end unit. Um, so we're hoping to expand back a little bit more 
um, I think about 10 feet to give us some extra space in the bedrooms and an extra bathroom. Now, it, I noticed on this one drawing, it says five feet, four feet. I'm not sure. Is that five feet into it or five the, feet? Um, the, the sidewall will be, the length of the sidewall will be about five feet where it touches the setback to the corner. And then the other direction is about four feet of wall length from the setback line. To the end result is they, they end up about seven feet from the property line instead of the required 10. That's just due to the angle from yep. the two different sizes. Yep. So we're looking at trying to if we had to give it a footage into it, what would we say that is? Uh, let's say no less than six. No less than six feet into the side setback? No, there, there, would, be be no there would be at least six feet of setback remaining. So right, it would be so no, no more, more than, than four, four foot. Foot. Okay, no more than four foot. Anybody else has got any questions? And you said that is for the bedroom and for a bathroom and Yeah, exactly. The roof line of that probably will be the same as with the house that it currently is? That's my understanding, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is planning to have anything other? Any uh, no, the only other thing I would point out is that the on the other property, there are no structures that are nearby. I was going to ask... Okay, any other questions at the moment? There being none, you may have a seat for a second. I'm gonna open it up to the public and ask if anybody from the public wishes to speak for or against this application. Please come forward at this time to introduce yourself for the record. Let the record indicate no one wishes to speak for or against this application. Therefore, I bring it back to the board any okay. other? Rolly, anything? No questions of the applicant? I, I have none. No. Okay. It's pretty cut and dry. Any closing comments, ma'am? Thank you, Ms. Yeah, appreciate it. It's a nice day. So. <laughs> Have a great day. All right. Okay, I will. So I'll make a motion. Uh, I'm going to close it to the public oh, okay. and bring it to the board for discussion. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought that's what we just did. <laughs> no, for. Now we are. That's okay. No further discussion? Okay. Motion? I'll make a motion that we grant application Z02020-0002 for 485 Endicott Street East, Unit 16. Um, Granting a variance would not be contrary to the public interest because there really, really is no effect at all to the general public. Um, if the, ver the 
the spirit of the ordinance will be observed because it has no effect on the zoning of that particular area whatsoever. Uh, it will do substantial justice because the benefit to the applicant is far greater than any harm that could potentially be caused to the general public. Um, the values of the surrounding pro properties would not be altered, limited, or diminished in any capacity. And I would say that it, it doesn't diminish the, the, there is a fair and substantial relationship. The, the purpose of this ordinance is not violated by this um, under the unnecessary hardship provision. Um, zoning stays intact. It has, abs you know, it has absolutely no deleterious effect on any reason why we may have zoned this area the way it is. Okay. We have a motion. And it is reasonable. I'm mean, sorry, that's the other clause of the, the other one. It is, a re it is a reasonable request. Okay, so we have a motion. I second the motion. Okay. <coughs> Discussion of the motion? All those in favor of the motion? Okay, passes. You're welcome. Gotta get the sound too. Static electricity and germs. Just did this one. That's on this month. Right, it's 18. all the same. Okay. They just took last month's and put it front loaded it okay. onto the new one and then added to it. Okay, so the next one is gonna be six ninety Hayes Boulevard. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good? All right. Okay, next on the agenda is going to be 690 Weirs Boulevard, number 8. with the variance application. Applicant requests a variance from Section 7, uh, seven Section 235-35B, side set back to allow for addition to the existing cottage. Would the applicant please come forward? Oh. oh. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Gail Zaka. My husband and I have been coming up to the Lakes region for 50 years since we got married. And we've had this cottage when our kids were small. Now we have two grandchildren. So we're really kind of cramped, and we just want to add some space onto an existing bedroom. It won't have any effect on um, the town. You know, we don't live here as all year round so we don't have kids in the school and there's no other cottage close to us that would be impinged by this making this a bigger bedroom and we had no idea that we would be not within um, the zoning regulations it was a kind of a surprise because it's on the side of the building On the side that, that you're going to build the extension, I'm, I'm looking at the map here, and it shows like an access road. What What is on that side? Is it wooded area? It's wooded area, and there's a dumpster. Okay. And the, and the one on the back of the cottage is another road that has three or four other cottages, but that wouldn't change. That would That wall would just be longer. So it looks like you're going to just take that little open space between where it does yes, like sir. that, and you're just going to close that in. Right. And the, oh, okay. I'm looking at this again. the one side, it's just going to be 
square. It's going to be a square building now, <laughs> oh. okay. rather than all chopped up. Do you see it? I, I do, and in fact, this technically speaking, this building is already in the setback. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I got a little picture here, and essentially it would just go like that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that now. I saw the line, and it, and it the right. red line, and it kind of threw me off a little and bit. It's that like may have been something that was a really small amount. No, it the, wasn't the extension. <laughs> it's got to be it's inches. What's there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a couple of feet. But. Is it? Yeah. And all of the streets out there are private. I, Whether I, that okay. makes any difference. <clears throat> not to you, but they're all private roads and to some degree very seasonal. Okay. Any other questions of the applicant at this time? Rolling. You good for now? What's that? I said, are you good for the second? Are you good okay right now? Yeah. Okay. You may have a seat for a second. Thank you. I'm going to open it up to the public and ask if anybody from the public wishes <laughs> to speak for or against this application, please come forward at this time and introduce yourself for the record. That record indicate no one from the public wish to speak for or against this application. Therefore, I bring it back to the board for further questions. Is there anything else that we need to know that we might not know about this? No. Any further questions of the applicant? No. Not for me. Any closing comments from the applicant? Very good. Thank you. With that, I'm going to close it to the public, bring it to the board for discussion. Well, the only thing I would say, Mr. Chair, is that I do notice that the Condominium Association has approved this, so um, it's not likely there's going to be any, any objections from anybody within the association. Yep. I mean, looks reasonable to close it off on the corner. Yeah. It's not actually going out of its little square. Yeah, I, like I said, I when I first looked at this, I thought that the whole, and, and now I'm realizing that's the whole existing building that's already in the setback. Yes. She just wants to add, square the building off. So that's, I was a little thrown off by that initially, but that was my initial confusion. No. Okay. No further discussion, I'd like to entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve a variance Z0-2020-0 for 690 Weirs Boulevard, number 8, uh, to reduce the side setbacks to allow for an addition. Uh, because granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because there really is no effect on the on the public for this. If the variance was granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed because it has absolutely no effect on the purpose of that particular zoning. Granting the variance would do substantial justice because, again, the benefit to the applicant certainly outweighs any possible detriment that could occur to the community. If the variance is granted, the value of the surrounding properties would not be diminished because it doesn't really have any effect on these surrounding properties. And as to the hardship um, under the uh, 5A1, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes and the ordinance and the specific application, it has no effect. And under two, the proposed use is reasonable because it's, it's just, it's reasonable. It's not adding 
or subtracting or doing anything out of that reason. It's just a reasonable request. Very good. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We, we have a second. Discussion of the motion? There being none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion passes 3 0. Enjoy. Okay. Hang on. My workout tonight. Make sure I don't get zapped here. It's just. It's that electrifying personality. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, next application is uh, uh, 92 Pine Street variance application. The applicant is requesting a variance from Article 8. Should that be 7? But whatever. Section 235.46, table of all street parking requirements, minimum requirements to reduce the number of spaces from 20 to 14. Excuse me, it's backwards. We want to go from 14 to 20. Hmm? It says 20 to 14 here. I know. That's not what the application is, though. It's I don't want to shrink my parking lot. I want to grow my parking lot. So in other words, you have 14, and you want us to Correct. give you a variance so that you can park up to 20 cars. Correct. Mm -hmm. Why do we yes. need a variance to do that? <laughs> no, he's, he's got it backwards. He, he, he uh, for the use that he wants to do, he it is a requirement that he have 20 parking spaces. He only has 14. Yes. But in, in what it says right there, it says that we want to go from 20 to 14. <coughs> what, what this says here. Yeah. yeah. It means from the requirement of 20 to your requesting 14 is what it means. No. I have 14. I want to go to 20. Am I just saying it backwards? I don't know. You're going to add six more spaces than Correct. This is not my understanding. <coughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Are you going to add... Parking spaces Correct. through this? Are these going to be off street parking? Correct. Well, I don't think he needs to be here if that's the case. Uh, there are there are fourteen spaces delineated on the the drawing. On the drawing. And hang on a second. It was my understanding that with the use, it being a church and the square footage and the number of pews, that he would be required to have 20 spaces, which he does not have. Right. So. So, is it your plan, sir, to add parking spaces? No. Or is it to just go forward with this application with only 14 parking spaces? Yes. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> I I need to have 20 vehicles to be able to be parked there. Yeah. Right. I have access for 14. So uh, so the I think the what I'm asking for is it's 9 feet by 19 feet per space. What we wanted to do was shrink that so that we could get it to have the full capacity of 20 just changing the size of what the actual parking space would be requested. Uh, <laughs> I'm not good at this stuff, so <laughs> I'm trying my best. shrinking the size of the parking spaces. Yes. And the cars require a certain size so that they can open the door and get in and out. I understand. How are you going to do that? Well, that's what they asked me to come here. That was the suggestion to come here and ask. I, I, the smaller cars, there's larger cars, there's all different kinds of sizes of cars. Um. Well, including the ADA space, it's 15 I, I think what I'd like to see is a design showing the 20 cars part, uh, on, that dis on this form. Well, I can't do that with the legal size that's the requirement. That's the issue. Well, that's the point. Where are the six spaces? 
Why, why are you going to put them? Well, as I say, there's smaller cars need smaller spacer, larger cars need larger spacers. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah, I, I just want to get an understanding is, is that you plan on keeping the same 14 spaces as they are legally defined Correct. by the city of Laconia. Correct. Okay, and you want to continue with this proposal with only those 14 spaces. Correct. So you're ac actually asking for a variance from our provision, our ordinance, that says that this, for the number of pews that you want. Correct. That you need 20 spaces. Correct. Okay. Have I, have I put that? I see what you have. Saying. Correct. Yep. <laughs> I'm getting it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, at 14 cars, I'm only allowed so many seats. At 20 cars, I'm allowed so many seats. <clears throat> does, does your church meet now? Yes. Do they have, how, how many cars are there at your services? 20, give or take, you know, 16 to 20. Yeah. Um, but we're right here down at uh, below Health and Human Services. Hector's, we're in that parking lot, so we have no issues there. But the space is small, so now we're going to a larger space, and we're in, the, we're in a community now rather than in a, a, a full building of all other events where, we, you know, just more, more of a homey atmosphere that we can have in there, you know, to bring into the neighborhood. I don't know how you're going to fit it in. I don't know. I'm following what was suggested. I, I don't know what else to say. No, I, I, I think, I think mm. what we understand is, is your request. Mm -hmm. So the question is, hypothetically, you either have too many pews or you have too few parking spaces. Correct. <laughs> Which is more important to you? Uh. Well, the, the variance is a request to Continue keep, on. keep his number of seats the same okay. and reduce the required parking. And that reduce is, the required parking. That okay. is the request. All right. Thank you. This, this this board cannot grant a variance for a smaller parking space. I see. Oh, that's what that I. That's, not, yeah, that's not within your power. That is not. So. It's not. <laughs> Sorry. Thank goodness. It's not within my power either. <laughs> so he will have the same number of patrons, or parishioners. Sorry. And just less than the required parking space. The, okay. the idea being that some of his parishioners may walk. Yes. As you'll recall, this is a former uh, yeah. food Yeah, we granted service. a variance for this for completely different use. Yep. Space. Yeah, grocery store has been there. The poultry yeah. shop. Well, it's I don't. The poultry shop. I don't believe store. ever opened. We yeah. gave him the variance, right. but, but he, I don't believe it ever opened. Right. Yeah. It's been a number of things. This is the first time it's been a church that we know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's been no. It's been a gross, a small little grocery market yeah. for forever. Um, I'm just concerned where the other cars. Don't are the. Uh, Gonna park. Spaces have to be by law or a certain size. Yes, yes. We, we define the spaces as being uh, uh, nine by yeah. eighteen. Because when I put my when I bought yep. my building, I had to mark them out for the city to show them. Yeah. So, so this plan that you have before you is fourteen spaces at the required size. What's fifth? Well, and plus the ADA, yes. Plus the ADA. Yep. Okay. So they're five short. Well, the problem I see is you can't stop people from going to church. So more cars are going to park there, they're going to end up out in the street. And that's a hill, fine hill. 
Um, Sir, how will you control the overflow of cars well, if your church becomes successful? In which we if all my hope church it becomes does. that successful, I the alternative that I have in plan now is that I will split the services. I'll do a morning service and an afternoon service, and require people to not, you know, to not run into that. I don't want to have that issue. I don't want neighbors to have that issue with cars all over the place. Uh, I agree upon that. It, you know, I, I can put bulletins out every week. I can have someone out there saying you're not going to get in. I, I agree with that. I don't want the streets all filled up with all kinds of cars. I don't want it to be silly. I'll split the services. I'll do a 10 a.m. service and a, and a 1 o'clock service. So I know a good portion of the people don't want to get up for the 10 a.m. service now. <laughs> the other trouble is you can't, con you can't control what time people will go to no, church. No, it, it, it's true. But I, I think as a congregation that we would come together and make some agreements upon that. We don't want to be an issue in the neighborhood. We're not even there yet, you know. It's... Uh, we, we have had no issues any place that we've been, so I, I can only say well, we would do our best at it as anything, you know. But as a group of people, we would come together and, and work on that. Now, Dean, mm -hmm. if I may ask, um, let's say a year from now, let's say hypothetically, He's granted his 14 spaces. And a year from now, it transitions into something else. Would those 14 spaces be allowed to transition with it? You mean if the, if the building becomes another type of use? Yes. Um, I would suggest that you put a condition on the variance that it is for the use as a church. And if if the use changes, then all bets are off. Because even uh, my thoughts would be that it being a church, it's only overloaded usually one day a week. Mm -hmm. And that's usually at a time when it's not... Are you a Sunday service or yes, a Saturday sir. service? Sunday service. Sunday service. So it's usually at a time that's yeah. less peak. Mm -hmm. You have another problem up there, too. That's a very, very congested area. You've got mm -hmm. Warren Street. you got Me Mechanic Street. you got Pine Hill. you got that street, I can't remember, the, on the side of the building there. All converging Tyler. in that one spot. That's Tyler Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Tyler in front of it or beside it or whatever. Yeah, no, it's it Tyler Street. Yeah. Used to be Tyler Street Market. So. I have no more questions for the applicant, Mr. Chair. Mm. Okay, you can have a seat for a second. I'm going to open it up to the public and ask if anybody from the public wishes to speak for or against this application. Please come forward at this time and introduce yourself for the record. Let the record indicate no one from the public wishes to speak for or against this application. I'll bring it back to the board for further questions. There being no further questions, I ask the applicant if he has any closing comments. You know, we would do our best to work with the community up there. We certainly don't want to be an issue. I understand that the, the, I know that's a major intersection there. Um, you know, it just, I think it will bring great things to the neighborhood on top of just being a church there, you know. So that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other particulars uh, that we would? No, I mean this. This the uh, the parking requirement is driven by the number of seats, and I and I don't have that number in front of me. Um, but I know that in the discussions, he obviously does not have the required twenty parking spaces. Yep. So. The, the variance to go to 14 was required. And you could make that conditional on 
the use by this property owner. Okay. Thank you. Discussion? I've, had, I've said what I have to say. Okay. Don't know what you said, but. Uh, well, I, in the questions of the applicant, that was, I just wanted some clarification as to what it was he was really looking for because the application was a little vague. Okay. And I, I think that uh, the planner has answered the rest of any questions that I would have had. Okay. Roland, any other discussion? No? Okay. Open it up to, for a motion. I move that the variance be denied. <clears throat> the reasoning is that it does cause a hardship in the neighborhood. It will affect the uh, tenor of the neighborhood. And, uh, it's, the variance is, is contrary to the public interest as for the park and an overflow, the possibility of overflow parking would extend yeah, there's no other area there. Right. So it would create. Okay. We do have Sunnels down the Sir, we're. Well. Thank you. The spirit of the ordinance. Well, um, I, I'm not going to support. I, I would support a motion t in the negative. I was, I was just. I was just not going to make a motion or a second any motion that was made. But well, we can discuss it and make a group motion. How does that work? Is that fine? If we go through this and... and we can. Um, if that's what you want to do. Well, the, it was thrown out there as a denial, and it seems that you also agree that it's a denial? Okay. So, and I don't see any other way myself than to deny it because there's not enough space there for for overflow parking so yeah we're not even factoring in winter um no snow and stuff like that no well i i go through that intersection twice a day because i don't live far from there and there are people parked randomly kind of all over that area anyway because there's a number of multifamilies so on that spot. we feel that the spirit of the ordinance uh, would be dis observed by denying this uh, due to the parking situation and the close knit ness, mm -hmm. the closeness of the neighborhood. Well, I think the granting, I mean, if you want me to go through the things, I mean, you know, to elaborate on what Roland said, I think granting the variance would be contrary to the public interest because the parking is just inadequate. I think if the variance was granted, that, this, that the, the whole spirit of the ordinance, which requires so many parking spaces for a certain purpose in a building this size, has been, has been violated mm -hmm. beyond, you know, what I, what I believe is, is reasonable. Um, so substantial justice is done by denying it due to well, the fact that the general public would not be harmed in denying it and, and would be harmed if it was accepted. The value of the surrounding properties are diminished, would be diminished because... I, I can't really say that the values of either. the surrounding properties would be diminished or enhanced. I think, that's an, I think that one is kind of a wash, but we have all five criteria that need to be, yeah. that, that need to be satisfied here. Um, there are a number of accidents already Coming down at the, the hill. at the location, um, so I I can only see the possibility of more. Yep, creating um, an unsafe yeah situation I don't, I, where people backing in and out. Of I, I I wish this applicant the best of luck, but considering the limitations of this particular spot and its parking, I, I don't I I can't see myself supporting this. So I would support Roland's Roland's motion to deny. Okay, did we speak enough on that motion or? 
Cut it. Okay. So we got a motion of the denial based on our discussion. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a second. All those in favor of the motion? Okay. I'm sorry, sir. I understand. Thank you. We're good now. Okay, the next application is uh, 68A Gables Drive Special Exception Application uh, from Article 7, Section 235-41M to allow short-term lodging. Is the applicant here? Yes. Which one are we doing? Um, 11SE 68A Gables should be the O'Briens. Oh, the O'Briens. Oh, okay. I had set that one aside because I, I got an uh -oh. email that uh, <laughs> they weren't going to be here. So, all right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Uh, so, while we were going through the short-term rental ordinance um, last year with the City Council, it was their desire that as part of the short-term uh, rental regulation that we would introduce a special exception for short-term rentals with a specific criteria which you have before you as opposed to the regular criteria for special exceptions. So it's slightly different criteria. Um, the intention of the City Council was to allow this avenue to exist, but by no means should you take that to mean it as that you should grant all of them or deny all of them. It was to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. Unlike the previous situation that we had when we were trying to enforce it under the uh, rooming and boarding houses. So this is a little, a little bit different animal and a little bit different approach. But um, so you just I basically took hardship. E is basically the difference. What? Yeah, we, we, we took away a couple of the items that were on the regular special exception, but the E, the fifth one, is an either or, and the applicant's got to pick one, obviously, and, and in this case, they've picked uh, the first option. So this copy of the ordinance that was in our package is this the ordinance as it reads now? This was included in what I yeah, was getting. Let me uh, just take a. I don't have this. Give us a second one. Sure. If you don't mind. Yeah. No, I, it's. This is new territory for us all. Let me read what you have, and then I can pick it. Yeah, this was, I, well, okay. Hey, that's that. What are you looking at? 
looking at, Gail? I have um, the 235 41. Yeah, 219, 235. Right. And I was just wondering is this updated since the special exception requirement was added by the yes. council? Yes. Um, yes. So and, then, and then, so that section E adds the special exception provision in the short-term lodging ordinance. And then in the special exception, uh, which you don't have, you don't have the... Yeah, we do have a copy. Well, of it's the special exception is, yes, is those items right there for, for short-term... Rental. Yes. So you have the correct. We do have the correct one. Yes. Okay. Because my question to you was not to you, sir. Okay. To yeah. If you want to sit for a second, that's fine. I'm sitting. Yeah. And, and we, yeah. I apologize. That's fine. That. No. Um, I was under the impression that if a rental unit or if a short-term lodging unit had been used for short-term lodging for at least five years. They are eligible for the, that is one of the provisions of the that special. That is one of the provisions. But of the special needs, exception. It still needs a special exception. Correct. Okay. That was, that was my question. Yeah. Because there is a provision here that. Yeah. That. that they were, they're, they've been doing this. The, the two main criteria for granting the special exception other than the, the boilerplate things about, you know, safety and all, all that is, A, has it been going on for five years or more, or B, is there some extenuating circumstances right. that benefits the community? So Thank it's an you. either or, but, yeah, still requires a special exception. Okay. All right. That, I think that was basically my question. Okay. And they have to choose ahead of time which yes. one yes. And not, cannot change midstream. <laughs> Correct. Okay. No change in horses. All righty. Everybody on the same page? I am on the same page. Good. Sir, introduce yourself for the record and tell us how we may help you. So my name, is, you my name is Richard O'Brien. Um, the among the owners, my sister and my wife and I own a condominium at unit 68A Gables Drive in South Down. The Gables is a condominium association of 32 units, I believe, and we have owned that since uh, June of 1991. Since June, roughly the summer of 1992 onward, we have on occasion utilized uh, taking the taking advantage of the availability for short-term rentals uh, during times when we have not used the unit primarily uh, most most years it has been we've had uh, vendors in that have rented the units for uh, bike week as well as times periods of time in August when typically we're not there but there has been demand and requests for rentals so we really have been renting since 90, 1992 Utilizing um, Roach Realty and Kevin Shaw from 92 until 2018. And then in 2018 and last year, we utilized Bayside Rentals uh, as our rental agent. Um, the, the switch was mainly because Kevin's focus had been more, leaned more towards sales and Bayside's was more towards rentals, so it was more of a business decision. However, Kevin and I are still on very good talking terms. As a matter of fact, he, sub he provided a, a statement um, of the fact that we've been doing business for X number of years. And essentially, the condominium association, the bylaws of the association have, have always allowed for rentals. And this is my, pre my presence here is a follow-up from filing the paperwork with planning that was required for the new short-term rental regulations, and then obviously following up here with zoning, finding out that we were, were not zoned, quote unquote, for rental. So I would appreciate your approval for this so that we can continue something and um, you know, continue to enjoy it and afford it. 
That's all. Are there any questions? Um, I, the, the only question I have is apparently our new ordinance restricts short-term rentals between May and October. Is that generally when you rent it? Between May and October, October and May. October and May and October. May to October. Uh, oh. In this case, the seasonal part does not apply. Okay. This could be done on a year-round basis. This could be done on a year-round basis. You, if you give the special exception. Okay. Right. And what makes that distinguishing <coughs> difference? Just for, is the, that your for the educational home? part. No, it is, a, it is a secondary home. My sister lives in Rhine, New Hampshire, and my wife and I live in Lowell, Mass. <coughs> How does that 151-day apply to this? Well, if I can answer, I, I, we use it. To, I, I'll answer two questions at once, if I may. Um, the timing, typically from after Labor Day until uh, the end of May, we don't even offer it for rental because we're utilizing it. And we're typically using it from, either, well, my sister's here a lot, from like a Thursday through a Monday or Tuesday. My wife and I are up whenever, we, even though we're both retired, we're busy. Um, and so we're typically up. So we're close. We're in that 150 day, one day range, but I was told that because I can't really prove we're in the 151 day range because we don't get our mail there, and we're, we're I'm registered in Massachusetts as a voter. My sister's in in Rye as a voter, so there's no way to really prove that we utilize it 151 days, with the exception of you know utility bills and light bills and water bills. But so it's it's a tough. A tough road to hoe, except for me to say, I do, um, and I understand why you need proof of stuff like that. And in answer to your question, primarily that's why it's from about the second week of September four until May that we don't offer it for rental because we are up here in the fall and the winter, um, as well as in the spring. With the exception of muddy season, we sort of stay away. Well, well that's good. <laughs> you won't get any argument from me on that. Yeah. So, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes. So there are, there are several provisions within the short-term ordinance, and, but they're not all related to one another. Okay, so, okay. all right. So if you're in the CR or the SFR zone, you can do short-term rentals with a permit, period. Mm -hmm. If you are owner-occupied, that's where the 150-day provision comes in. Okay. All right. He is not requesting, originally he requested it under the owner occupied, but when we did our diligence on it, we did not feel that he met that criteria. So he is coming to you under the special exception provision. So the, the, the 150 days is not applicable uh, and the seasonal is not applicable. In this oh, okay. case, it is just the special exception for his particular situation. I know it's a little confusing, but you you, you have to separate the sections out. Well, what makes the special exception applicable? If these things don't make it applicable, something must make it applicable. Because the decision was made to add in the special exception provision as another way of obtaining a permit as opposed to the other ways. This only gives them Don't a permit. Don't we have to provide some criteria? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Don't we have to provide some criteria to show that the special ex exception meets those requirements? Not those requirements, no. The it's some requirements. The special exception requirements, and I just had them. Just hang on. these Roland it's these requirements are the special exception requirements so it's those five requirements that you have in your in your packet okay mm -hmm. for, for this case for this application it's it's special exception under this provision right here
and this is not considered shorefront. This is considered. Um, this is um, this is RS. It RS is, yeah, residential it is not. single. Okay. Yeah. So, the the only provision of the ordinance that he qualifies under in our determination is the special exception process. So that says that the structure that the applicant can demonstrate that the use in question has been common practice this specific property and structure for a, a period of not less than five years prior to the enactment of the short term lodging ordinance. Do you have the contracts or whatever you signed? I have a, I provided a statement from already? Roach Realty yeah. and contracts from Bayside. Yeah. We have oh, that. We, we have all that, yep. and it satisfies the five years. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, do we have any other questions of the applicant? No. You may sit for a second. Thank you. I'm going to open it up to the public and ask if anyone from the public wish to speak for or against this application, please come forward at this time and introduce yourself for the record. Exercises for arthritis. Let the record indicate no one from the public wish to speak for or against this application. I'll bring it back to the board for further questions. There being none, closing comments, sir. Again, uh, it's a practice that we have been doing since 1992, so I and I would appreciate the ability to continue forward. So, okay, thank you. With that, I'm going to close it to the public, bring it to the board for discussion. As this is our first one of the new season, as one might <laughs> say, uh, I'm interested in thoughts and stuff. As we do, I, I, my only thought is for this particular situation. Um, and apparently, I'm taking the application on its face that there have been no issues from 1992 forward. Now, if I can just for a second to add to that, please. All this does is allow him to apply for a permit, which then the permit itself is going to provide the guidance of any community disruptions or any particular violations. Yes. Parking. All, all other provisions of the short-term lodging ordinance, would, would he would still act. be required to uh, uh, adhere to, you know, apply for a permit, be inspected, get the permit. And, and we would be monitored for uh, noise and those kinds of things. Yes. Now, is this a marketable special exception that we're giving? I would condition the special exception to be for this owner only, or this group of owners. And a actually, under the ordinance, it expires with a change of ownership anyway. But just to it be on does. the safe side, right. yeah. And okay. it has to be renewed every two years. Every two well, years. Well, I'm talking yes. about special exception. Yeah. I would I would condition I would condition the special exception to be in effect for the current owners. What would it? okay? And does the special exception expire in two years? No. No. Okay. It can only expire. The permit expires. Yes. Oh, so he'd have to go back to you and pay another permit fee, yep. but he wouldn't have to come back to this board every two years. Correct. But okay. a new owner, that's why I was asking about I'm it. Unless there's a new owner. Okay. Unless there's a new owner. <clears throat> owner. Because that's why I was asking, is it something marketable that would increase the value of the property to a new owner? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So that's why I asked that question. So it is. I, I would recommend that you put a condition on the special exception that limits the special exception to the current owners. Okay. That makes sense. Makes sense to me. Roland? Makes sense to me. Okay. 
do y'all want to discuss this or y'all want to how do y'all want to go with this for a motion well i can i can make a stab at it um and you can jump in if you think that anything i've said is out of line um i make a motion that we grant the special exception um to mr o'brien well, to Sarah Richard and Patricia O'Brien. Um, to allow him to operate a short-term lodging facility at the Gables Condominium Association uh, for, I don't have an application number here. It's that at 244. We got it. 68A Gables Drive in Laconia, New Hampshire. Okay, and A, the request is specifically authorized in the chapter. It is authorized in the chapter. Uh, the new ordinance allows for this particular use in this zone. Uh, there will be no, there will be no increase in municipal services um, other than those that can be controlled through other, other municipal sources. Um, the special provisions set forth in this chapter are fulfilled. Uh, there doesn't appear to be anything that would create a hazard to the health, safety, general welfare of the public. And um, the applicant has demonstrated to the satisfaction of the planning department that the unit has been used in this capacity since 1992, which far exceeds the five years previous to the enactment of the owner. And if I need to make it clear that this exception goes only to Sarah, Richard, and Patricia O'Brien, if there's any change at all in the ownership of this condominium, either through death or inheritance or whatever, I'm not giving it to the O'Brien family, I'm giving it to these specifically three people. Okay. Okay. And that it should follow the permitting process. And that it, it yeah, and yeah. that it follows whatever other permitting process the city has laid out. Okay, so we have a motion. Second. We have a second. All those in favor of the motion. Okay. We passed one. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Zoning district. Oh, I get it. <laughs> okay. And we're moving right along. We've done good on that one. I'm impressed with us. Huh? I said we did good on that one. I'm impressed. And well, I, you know. All right. Uh, the next one is a variance for 76 Morningside Drive. Uh, the applicant requests a variance from Article 6, Section 235.35A, front setback to reduce front setback for the construction of a bathhouse. Would the applicant please come forward, introduce yourself for the record, and tell us how we may help. My name is Jim St. Pierre. I'm the president of Windmill Shores Community Association. We're proposing to build a bathhouse at our community beach. The bathhouse is relatively small, about 150 square feet. It would be utilized by all the homeowners which have deeded beach rights to that area. We're proposing to move it forward as we've had for a couple of reasons. You know, one is to preserve a tree that we have behind it. We don't want to dig into the roots and damage that tree. Um, and second, to ensure that we can meet the setback requirements off the lake. Any questions? Um, uh, my only question is, is, is there a bathhouse there now? No, there is not. So there's nothing there now? No. 
No, just, um, just beef. Is there any storage or anything? That no, no, there is no. not. And what do you, I, I mean, I guess I really can't ask this, but I mean, is this for your members of your homeowners association? Are you going to be able to store kayaks and things like that there, or is? It will not be big enough to store kayaks in. We do have, we do have kayak storage in racks uh, oh, for, okay. for summertime and use on the property. Um, this will be a combination uh, bathroom, small storage area. The storage area is very small, and it's primarily to get access to the plumbing for the bathroom. But there will be a little bit of storage in there for uh, barbecues or a couple of chairs, very small. And you guys all take the responsibility for maintaining this, so I'm guessing you could probably put rakes or anything that belongs to the association. like That's correct. Like rakes and yeah, maybe garbage buckets, garbage right. bags for your thing or a lawnmower or yeah. something like that. But it's... We, we do our own maintenance. The neighbors kick in, you know, rake, rake the beach up, spread wood chips. Uh, do the maintenance ourselves. Oh, okay. So you, you're really just asking for a, a one a one stall toilet and a sink. That's right. It would be a, a unisex bathroom, so it would have a, a toilet and a urinal with a sink. Okay. And um, I know the association members will have keys? Yes. Yes, they will. E each, okay, each so it won't be open all the time to anybody that... that that's correct. We'll have limited access to homeowners, well, probably okay. through a passcode. All right, or some locking mechanism that, right. that is exclusive to the to the Otherwise, members of the association only. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you do you have your shoreline? Are you did you need something from the state? Yes, we did. We we uh, notified the the shore the shoreline uh, the state state of New Hampshire shorelines. We do have their approval. Okay. Already for that. And is that in here, Dean? I, mean, I thought I... Uh, I don't... Have you... Okay. Um, okay. I, I think that's the only question right now that I have. I do have a copy of that. I'm not sure I have it here, but I'll, I'll look after. Make sure you get a copy of that. Well, I mean, that's the just, most important part is y'all have it, not. Yeah, not that we have it, but I, I, I mean, I could, without us seeing it, I would have could have made it as a condition that, that you provide all that documentation. We, we, but if we, you think you have right. it. Right. We won't issue the uh, building permit till we have it anyway. So. Oh, okay. All right. So. Right. I'm pretty sure we have it. Oh, I did have one other question. Is this something, is, did the association vote on this? They did vote on it last year. Oh, okay, all right. Yes, we have approval uh, with the dollar limit. We're working now to resubstantiate the dollars now the year's gone by. Yep. So it's a it's in process. But you're, you have a governing board and they've yes, approved we do. the construction of this. Oh, okay. Yes, we do. We're incorporated. We have a board. Um, and, and we did, uh, at our general meeting last year, have approval to move forward with the dollar limit. Okay. So it's actually out of the 50-foot waterfront buffer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's out of our 50-foot buffer. It's still within New, New Hampshire DES jurisdiction, yes. Okay. I do yeah, have the, a the, only, the only relief being asked for is the front setback from the street property line. I do have a copy of the application here. I don't have, don't believe I have a copy at this moment of the approval. You're welcome to the, this application if you'd like. Okay. Any other questions of the applicant? No. And this is like a little cement building. Yes. Yes, it will be. It's going to be made out of, of a masonry block. Uh, one third of the bottom third will be. Um, sorry, I don't want to use Bob. It's split block. Split block. And the top third will be vinyl sided. We've been working with the neighbors around the area to, to get their input on, you know, something that would be cosmetically appealing to them. We've got their buy-in on what it would look like. And, and you have all your designs for a septic system and stuff like that. We're going to tie into city sewer and water. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Then. That's here on the drawing. 
Oh, it is? There. I'm sorry, then I, miss, I must have missed well, that. that's I okay. That. The, the two pieces of property on either side of you, the ones in red, Yes. are those, uh, uh, do each of those have a home on them? Yes, or they, they do. Those, those are homeowners. Are just vacant land? No. Nope. Oh, no. Nope. So they wouldn't be using your facilities? No, no. Okay. No. Well, they could. They could, you know, if they're at the beach, <laughs> I suppose. But we almost as I doubt that they will leave their homes on the lake and go to our, our <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> yeah, all the property in there is developed except for that one piece of land, which all the, the 64 homes that have deeded rights to that beach. Yeah. This will just give them the, the benefit of having a, a restroom at the beach, you know, particularly when they have young kids or, or older people like myself are down there. Oh, okay. And 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 I, I, that beach has been there since forever. Yes, it was incorporated in 1956. Okay. And they started building homes a couple years after that. Okay. Any other questions of the applicant at this time? You may have a seat, sir. Thank you. I'm going to open it up to the public and ask if anybody from the public would speak for or against this application. Please come forward at this time and introduce yourself for the record. Good evening, I'm Bob Durfee. I am uh, wear several hats here tonight. First, I am a member of the Windmill Shores Community Association, live in that neighborhood and use the beach. Uh, second, I'm a licensed uh, civil structure and highway engineer and uh, do good or bad, uh, have been designated the engineer and agent for my association <laughs> for all our permits. So if right there- at that meeting, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> so if there are any technical questions you have uh, on on the permit application and on construction of this bathhouse, I can answer that. But I certainly uh, am in for in favor of this uh, uh, variance. Uh, a couple other reasons we're asking for a variance is is one is if we get the variance and move the frontage uh, closer than the 25 foot offset. I think we're asking for 17 feet. That gets our bathhouse just outside the 50 foot shoreland protection zone. And we want to stay out of that to limit impacts and improve water quality. The second reason for pulling our bathhouse forward closer to the beach, it puts it in the blind spots for the two neighboring houses when they sit on their back porch, which they have lakefront, they don't see out the, the side of their porch and see a bathhouse there. We strategically located it in a blind spot. And as Jim already mentioned, uh, also uh, uh, that uh, we have had a very positive vote at our annual meeting, I think it was 75% approval yes. to go forward with this project. Uh, this project has been in the works in our association for a long time, and so we're really excited that we finally got uh, uh, support, financial support and also moral support to move forward. So we uh, ask that you uh, consider and approve our variance request. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who, from the public wish to speak for or against this application? Please come forward at this time. Introduce yourself for the record. Let the record indicate no one else from the public wishes to speak for or against this application. I bring it back to the board. Any further questions? There being none, any closing comments? There being none, I'm going to close it to the public and bring it to the board for discussion. I don't have a problem with this. Um, it's a it's a pretty shallow lot. It steeps down to the water pretty quickly. When I was a kid, I had my folks had friends that lived on that, and I I, I wish they had had some kind of. A, I'm surprised it took them this long. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Well, I think it's kind of beneficial. A, oh, yeah. it gives them a chance uh, someplace short of putting a porta potty out there which it's ugly it, it's not only ugly but it 
leads to other mischief that can. Well, that's why I asked if it was going to be locked in a veil and 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 you know what I mean. Through well, however they would choose to lock it, you know what I mean. I didn't. Yep. You know yep. that was the purpose of that question. And it being on the public sewer and public water yeah. okay. system, there's less likelihood of any uh, contaminants seeping out as it would be with a porta potty. I don't have. I, and I thought it was also nice that they took in account the neighbors and stuff in trying to find a location, which allows it to be shielded from the neighbors and not being an unsightly thing for the neighborhood. Yeah, I, 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 well, yeah. I, I, I don't have anything to say. I'm, All right. I said I'm ready to make a motion. If make a motion. Yes, uh, Chair is willing to accept. Please, that. please. I make a motion that we grant the variance for 76 Morningside Drive. I, again, I don't have an application number. I'm sorry. You have that, right? Yes. Um, to allow for the construction of a, well, it looks to be a 10.66 by 13.32 um, foot uh, bathhouse. Granting because granting the variance is not contrary to the public interest. In fact, it's actually, as you said, beneficial to the public interest. Um, if the very the, the spirit of the ordinance is such that the, the character of the neighborhood is not going to be altered at all by this, and public health, safety, welfare, as long as they they limit access to it to the members of the association, I don't see where there's any anything that has anything to do with it. Um, there is uh, granting the variance will do substantial justice because there there is no the, the benefit to this to having this here far far outweighs any any kind of damage that could be done by not having it. I think it actually could improve the values of the surrounding property because I mean, probably not by a lot, but the idea that there's a beach with a facility there is just always a good selling point to anyone that you know, wants to buy in that neighborhood. And the unnecessary hardship is a combination of the sight lines, the, the odd shape of the property. It's a shallow piece of property. And um, and that's what I see as, as the, the, the particular characteristic of this property and it is certainly a reasonable use of this okay we got a motion second. we have a second discussion of the motion there being none all those in favor of the motion it passes enjoy your bathhouse We'll get it from there too, but okay. just to quick I'll drop it now. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. The next application is application to do to do. Is 156 Eastman Shore Road with its variance uh, from Article 4, Section 235-9, uh, Shoreline Protection, and Section 6, Article 6, Section 235-35B, Side and Rear Setbacks to Reduce Rear Setback for Construction of a Screen Porch. I have a letter here indicating that the applicant. He is here. Oh, Good evening. Owen is here. <laughs> my name is Robert Owen. And Good evening. My uh, wife Barbara and I are <coughs> requesting a variance to construct a 12 by 14 foot screen porch which would have a roof, but which would be open on all sides, uh, sitting on compost, concrete, not compost, concrete post, 
uh, on the north side of our cottage. The, the cottage now house was built by my in-laws in -laws 68 years ago uh, and then added to in 1975. Um, and my wife and I, she grew up there. I've been going there for 50 years. Um, we now want to add back the screen porch that was there until um, 1975 when it was removed. Uh, <clears throat> the screen porch will conform to RR1 setbacks on the front line, front side, the road side, and on each of the side lines, side uh, property lines. Uh, but it does cross the 50 foot setback on the rear or the lake side. Um, at the point the cottage was built, um, there was no zoning and it has been non-conforming uh, ever since zoning came into effect and also the New Hampshire environmental laws came into effect. Uh, we applied and received a permit to do this from uh, New Hampshire uh, Department of Environmental Services. There's a uh, copy of, of that, hard to read, but it's in there. And the, uh, the porch itself, uh, about 20% of the total square foot area, which is what, I think 168 square feet, crosses that 50 foot line on the lake side. Uh, at the, the porch itself will be set back uh, a foot further away from the lake than the corner of the existing house uh, and then extend to the north 12 feet and 14 feet back. Um, the reason uh, we looked at different locations where it might go, this in fact uh, where it goes makes the most sense. There is a plan of the inside of the house. A window on the north side of the house would turn into a door to provide access to the porch. And uh, the site for the porch, and there's some photographs, will not require cutting any trees, nor will it do any earth moving uh, other than to try to dig into good old New Hampshire soil for some sun or two foundations. And if you know any strong high school students who want to deal with that, we're open for <laughs> applications. <laughs> so uh, that's basically why we are requesting the variance um, because we have a, a non-conforming house and uh, a, a porch which while it would be even further from the lake than the house uh, still has about two feet on one side and three feet at, one, at the other end uh, car crossing that line. Let me make one other comment but if you're looking at drawings um, they didn't print as well as I wish they had. Uh, but there's also uh, drawings of the deck. Uh, the deck was added to the front of the house in 1975. It extends eight feet uh, towards the lake out the front of the, uh, the deck. Um, also extended, if you look at the drawing uh, that sh is actually the zoning map in color in yellow, unless it's been re yeah that that one. Uh, you'll see that the deck uh, also extended beyond the north side of the house uh, a, a leg of it. Uh, that was removed uh, a couple of years ago because of rot. Uh, we will replace that, and that will provide plus a little five by four foot piece between it and the porch and there, that will provide access to a uh, door leading out on the deck and then the stairways there will be 
move that's on there now, existing now on the deck, will simply move north five feet. So the, um, so that's that's kind of the project in a nutshell. Uh, there are stakes you can see faintly in the drawings of, and uh, you see the explanation. Uh, the original porch design was intended to be 14 by 14 feet, and uh, New Hampshire DES said, no, we'll approve 12, we will not approve 14. So uh, the note is if you look at those stakes, which were the 14-foot extremities, back up two feet, those would be the two corner posts. So if I was looking at the pictures, the photos, yeah, okay, and I'm looking at this bottom photo, that's, that's the, where the decks, the screen porch is right. going to go through here. The existing stairway goes up to the deck in front of the house. The porch will be coming out to the left, set back from the corner of the house, a foot away from the lake, and then coming out 12 feet. Now, there's these, a retaining these wall posts in there, here and but here. But that will not move because the, the floor of the porch will be, in fact, over the top of that. So that will not move. And the stairway that you see here will simply slide to the left five feet, uh, filling in that little piece that I said uh, had been removed for rock. It shows on the, on the, on the plan. So they'll be able to, you'll be able to come off of this front deck. You'll come right onto that deck, right onto into an extension, and then a door into the porch. Into the and porch, and the porch will come across right. through and here. And then the light, the window you see on the end of the, no, the yeah, that will become a door onto the porch from the inside of the house. Okay. And people have asked, well, you know, why don't you move uh, the porch further back, and so we're not having to deal with the. 50 foot line and the reason is there's, there's a plan in there that shows one side of the interior of the, of the cottage uh, there's wall-to-wall -wall built in cabinets on that wall and if you moved it back it probably would block the kitchen window so you'd be into the process of having to remodel the kitchen take out my father-in-law's hard work with his wall-to-wall -wall cabinets uh, and he would be rolling over in his grave, I'm sure. Uh, and so that this was the least, most economical and simplest way to provide access from the interior of the house. Is that an irrigation system, <coughs> piping? That, that, those are uh, sprinkler systems, yeah. which won't be covered. The kitchen window is just barely showing on the left. Yeah, and it will not go that far. Okay. Will it cover this and window? That's a basement. It will not go that far either. That's a basement window into the mechanical room. All right, so it's going to go kind of like those are your two square corners. So if you when those are the two corners, and that's talking about this stake the and this further in back stake. Ex except that if you go back towards the house two feet, that's actually where the corners will be because those were set at a fourteen foot length. <coughs> And, uh, so are they going to go into the house it'll this come, direction? It'll go, it'll, no, straight towards the house. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. this one's going to move whole, two feet this way, moves. and this is going to move that's two right. feet. And, um, so this one's probably, you're going to be right there on your wall then, it looks like, or pretty close I, to it, I huh? think we're going to be on the inside of the wall inside. and find out how many rocks there are down, down there in that dirt. <laughs> I, I already know. <laughs> and so I'm taking it, then this way is the lake. That will be the 14 feet. That's right, front to back, away from the lake. Parallel. Yep. So 
this side of the house is what's facing the lake? No. No? No. That's the no. side of the house. That's, That's the side of the house. The, the window on the front will be covered uh, on, on the first floor uh, down in the basement. This faces the lake? I'm sorry? This faces the lake? Yes, yes it does. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of like this faces the side then. Yep. Yeah. Side of the porch would be and the, par uh, uh, parallel to the... Since it's sometimes hard to read the uh, dimensions, uh, the pencil didn't come out as well, the actual dimensions setback are typed out on a separate sheet of paper in terms of distances from the from the reference line uh, back over. So, uh, but we uh, over the years have applied uh, my father-in-law, and we followed that. Uh, we've tried to maintain as one of the trees on the lot as possible. Um, it's still probably 70% tree in spite of the garage and the house. Uh, as I said, we will not be cutting trees or disturbing soil other than to uh, try to put some posts underneath it. So, Dean, I don't see on this permit where the state said they actually approve it. Is there a page yep. that says it? Or, yep. uh, or well, is that those little... Uh, it just shows where it was. Yeah, yeah, kind of, I realize that's a lot to absorb, but. Is that the PM, PBN? Yes. Accepted? Check yes. mark and then yes. the initials and all that? Correct. Okay. Yep. And then that stamp off to the left over there. Okay. Yep. Cool beans. I should say the, the style of this basically will be a roof with posts coming down with infilled of screens. Um, there will be no walls on this. There will be railing around it and then screens. But it, the, the, the roof line will be a foot below the roof line of the existing house. So it will simply step down the, the height of the roof uh, from the other. But it'll, it's basically going to be a covered shelter uh, uh, not not winterized or in only. In fact, the house in all the 68 years has never been lived in year round. It was a cottage, and and uh, it did get insulated uh, in 1975 and jacked up what had been on post. And there's now a walk-in basement. So the floor of this screen room is going to be made from. I'm sorry, why you're here, Tony? That's okay. The floor of this screen addition yeah. is going to be made from? Well, it'll either be uh, pressure treated uh, uh, decking, uh, five quarter inch, uh, okay. or, uh, or else maybe one of the more composite materials. No, that's fine. I was just wondering yeah. if it was going to be something that can be easily converted to a closed-in room, and then yeah, yeah. one step away from not, a, not in my lifespan. <laughs> Got to ask the question. So. <laughs> I've been asked that question before by the state, and said, "You know, you're not enclosing this. No, we're not." Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions of that the applicant? Not be a mother-in-law's apartment. <laughs> Any other questions of the applicant at this time? There being none, you may sit for a second. I'm going to open it to the public and ask if anybody from the public wishes to speak for or against this application, <laughs> please come forward at this time and introduce yourself for the record. Let the record indicate no one from the public wishes to speak for or against this application. I bring it back to the board. Any further questions? So let me understand this. There was a porch, and then there wasn't a porch, but now they want to put the porch back. It's been a, enough years have gone by that from a zoning or DES standpoint, it's as if the porch was never there. 
the grandfathering yeah. was lost. Yes. The grandfathering has been lost. Correct. And how close to the water is this porch going to be? Uh, it's going to be about 47 feet. One, the uh, wall parallel to the shoreline will be about 47 feet from from the water. From the water. And, and it's Most of the porch is out of the 50-foot setback. Oh, okay. But oh, all right. There's, there's a small section that is within the 50-foot setback. Okay. So he's really only going into the setback by about three feet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's a real... Any other questions of the applicant? Just... <clears throat> that's a real out of the way place up there. That, that's a dirt road and it's a, it's a uh, dead end road. Uh, those houses are generally quite far apart. I, uh, I don't see the building a porch without wa uh, walls is going to have a problem for the uh. neighbors or for any of the uh, things that we consider important. Okay. Do we have any more questions for the applicant? I have none. I just want to point out that you have emails from the yes. two abutters on either side that are in favor of the uh, yes. request. What did I do with those? Yes. Uh, on behalf of the public, there was uh, one from a Larry Zup. I apologize for destroying your last name. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he, he is approval of what was going on and knows everything going on around it and was thankful that he got informed of it. And that's it. The other one was driving up from Wellesley. That was Owen. So I have no more questions of the applicant. Do you have any closing comments, sir? I'm sorry. That's okay. Do you have any further comments? Uh, no, I await your judgment. Very good. With that, I close it to the public. Discussion? The DES is good with it. Then, it's I I now that I understand that it's it's really only going three feet into our setback on the back side. I'm fine with it. Okay. We we'll give a motion, shot, will we? What's that? <laughs> Make a motion. Is this a, uh, a special exception? Or no, it's, no a variance. it's a variance. What's that? It's a variance. Variance. He had. Here, I'll go ahead and I give it a shot. That. Okay. okay. Uh, I'd like to make a very, uh, a motion to approve uh, variance number 0013. Uh, the variance is not contrary to the public interest as it would not impose any hardship or anybody to the accompanying neighbors or threaten the public health or safety or welfare of anybody by adding in a screened in porch. The spirit of the ordinance is being observed by approving this because it allows the occupant to enjoy their property in the lake as it is laid out. Uh, substantial justice done. I did that. The variance. The values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished, in my opinion, as this would not have any harm towards any of the neighbors within this area. And it was permitted by permit by the shoreland protection. And due to the type of 
Literal enforcement of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. Uh, the special conditions of the property that distinguish it from others is the topographical area and the layout of the property as it was uh, constructed prior to zoning and therefore some of it is within the different setbacks and stuff so that by approving this it had a screen porch at one time and even though the grandfathering was uh, expired uh, it makes common sense to be allowed to replace the screened in porch Got a second. Discussion of the motion? There being none, all those in favor of the motion. Enjoy your porch. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we had another Last short term tonight. One, One more. One more. Can I ask a quick question? Um, had we not gotten permit from it's hard to say but they or, or you yes and no uh, if usually when they deny something it's usually for a really good reason that they would not give a permit so we would, even if we gave you the variance, yeah. you wouldn't be able to do anything with it anyway without a permit. Well, uh, I mean, that was my assumption. And, uh, uh, it just helps. Yeah, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't issue the building permit without the DES. Yeah. Well, I actually uh, was on the verge of applying for the New Hampshire permit a year ago and then got stopped. Uh, very short of doing it, and then was back in January this year to complete it, but simply had picked up the form that I was using last year, which was revised in January of last year, and walked into DES, and they said, oh, that's the wrong form. <laughs> it cost is now $400, not $125. And, uh, so, uh, it had been revised again in November, of, you know, twice the same year. But uh, the um, the only comment, uh, the other comment I was going to make, uh, thought of that, uh, we we did talk to the neighbors on either side of us, and they uh, they had no problem with it. But, uh, uh, at least they haven't told me that they did. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have a good evening. Be, be safe. Okay. Uh, the next one is application 0014SE, 16 Birdie Way Special Exception, requests a special exception from Article 7, Section 235-41 to allow short-term lodging. Would the applicant please come forward? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself for the record. Hi, Jennifer Butchma. My husband and I are um, Olaf and Jennifer Butchma. We bought 16 Birdie Way in March of 2018. And we did rent it out last summer. And we pr predominantly do it just to kind of keep the house occupied because it's not our primary residence. And during the height of the season, we prefer the house to look lived in, occupied, to avoid mischief, mayhem, or any use that's not authorized by us. And I know some of the... In, um, I heard from like the city that they're concerned with you know parking and things like that. We are one of the few freestanding houses in Gulf Village. We have our own driveway and garage, so we usually rent out to families. We don't have a long history. We don't have five years of rental history. We don't know really what went on with the house prior to us purchasing it, and it's going to be our primary residence in two years when my husband semi retires. And you know, like we just, we have it a few people. We do use natural retreats to uh, manage the properties. And we have, we have a couple of rentals already set up for the upcoming year. I'm kind of here because I don't want to disappoint, you know, people who already, you know, made plans for the summer. And we are apparently, if you're over 1,400 square feet, you're not zoned for um, short-term rentals. 
I think we were over that by eight square feet. So, Dean, yep. <laughs> what section of the document are we using? This is the this is the special exception provision. So, the section E of the of the short term rental ordinance, and then. They're using option number two because they do not have two. the history of the of the uh, of the rentals. Okay. Okay. Um. In that vein, uh, if I could ask the applicant a question. Sure. Please. What's the benefit to the general community that? Uh, well, I think the benefit this at this greater, point that makes us greater than the financial gain. Well, there's not a lot of financial gain, really. We only rent it out for six weeks because that's as per my. I, we use cross insurance to insure the property, so you can't rent it out for more than six weeks. Otherwise, it they won't cover us. So um, it's definitely only six weeks that it gets rented out during the season. I'm not going to violate the provisions of my insurance policy or risk my insurance. But we, I think the benefit is that the house is not sitting looking vacant. You know, I just don't want to attract mischief, mayhem any unauthorized use to the property. And we definitely put no tax on, we, there's no, been po no uh, police activity, the police have never been called to the house, fire department, nothing like that. And you, and you rent it generally, do you rent, do you rent it six weeks to one person or do you rent it? No, it is seven week, uh, seven days at a time. Um, okay, and that's your minimum? Yes. Is that, okay, so you're not gonna, you're not gonna do day, you, you're, you will only rent it for seven, a week. Seven weeks at a time. We start by because weekend, as Mr. O'Brien said, we get vendors in, so we don't have you know anybody tearing up the place or anything. Um, they do have use of the driveway and garage, so we don't have parking issues. And they're mostly families who come, who are probably about on or about the same size as my own, so they don't even tax the water system or anything else, sewer and, system. And, and but you went your minimum amount of time to rent this property is one. Yeah, day. no B and B, nothing like that. No Airbnb. Yeah, you know. but I couldn't rent it for two days. No. Okay, so in other words, you, you have, you, you generally have no more than six, ten, well, if you count the vendors, you have no more than seven tenants in the course of the summer season? Yep. Okay. Usually it's biker week. We, we're up there for the week of 4th of July. Oh, okay. Whatever's left and of you July. Use it, you use oh, it. yeah. Yeah, okay, and you use it intermittently? Yeah, my, my, my kids went up to Bishop Holden. My one son went to Bishop Holden, and that's how we kind of started falling all over the area and decided we wanted to retire half the year up here in a couple of years. And you have a man, and you have a property manager, which is natural retreats. Natural retreats, yeah. Are you familiar with them, Dean? I am not. No. Okay. Does planning have anything of? Where's your primary residence? Oh, we're in Long Island. Where? Long Island. Long Island. Yeah. You can't tell. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yes, I have a friend from Long Island. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah my husband's family used to summer in Maine all the time, so he's in love with lakes. And then when we started coming up here, when the kids were Bishop Holderness, we just decided we really liked it. Spend about how many weeks a year here? Um, currently, spend um, we come up maybe a week in May, week in June, Fourth of July. We're always here, um, and then we come up maybe a weekend, a four-day weekend a month throughout the whole year. So we don't make the one fifty. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm not going to deceive you about anything. You know, we wish we could be here all the time, but you know, my husband is finishing up his career, so well, yeah, <laughs> got to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, we get that. And our our son, college sons also make use of the property respectfully 
So you rented out basically, you said? It's been, like I said, we only had the one summer so far. Um, we had the biker week, it was fully booked by vendors. And then we had some families, maybe four extra weeks of families. So you're talking like June? Two last weeks in June, um, July, and usually the first two weeks in August. After that, kids are going back to school and all, so it dies down. And except with the exception of the week you come up? Yeah. <coughs> Any special things, sir? Uh, again, I would recommend that you attach a condition to this if you if you approve the special exception that the special exception is for these current owners you've been coming up here how many years um well coming up to new hampshire we've been uh, or just this house doing the uh, uh short-term rentals uh just the one season we had one rent is in the first summer we bought they just you know, we would, weren't really prepared for it, and then Natural Retreats said, oh, we have someone who'd like to use it because they're golfers and we're near a golf course. This coming so year will be your second year. Full, the full true second year, yeah. Does the association have any objections to what you're doing? To my knowledge, no. They're who we went to to find out if we were allowed to rent. For, and they said, yeah, golf villages allow seven days rental. Some want a max, a minimum of 30-day rentals. Each one of the villages seem to have their own rules within um, South Down. Oh, okay. So you are within South Down. Yeah. The association was notified. Oh, and the association was notified? Yep. So they must not have an issue because they'd have an attorney sitting here. Yeah, they have they have a lot of they have a lot of rentals in South Down. Yes. Any other sure. Oh, okay. Can't find it here. Any other questions at the moment of the applicant? The applicant, no. Okay. With that, you may have a seat for a second. I'm going to open it up to the public and ask anybody from the public wish to speak for or <laughs> against this application. <laughs> Please come forward at this time and introduce yourself for the record. Well, you never know when someone's going to fly around that corner. Yeah. <laughs> Running up the stairs. Wait, wait, wait. Let the record indicate no one from the public wishes to speak for or against this application. We'll bring it back to the board for further questions. I, I, I have, well, it's not really a question, but I would like, if possible, for you to put the contact information for natural retreat. Should we approve this variance? I'd like to have the contact information for Natural Retreats, who apparently act as your broker for this, to be on record with the planning department. That would be part. That is part of the permit process. So we will, we will get that for sure. Oh, okay. So that's part. Yeah, we're we're new to this, no, as far as fine. this. So I'm just trying to think of yep. things that the city may need to have in the event that that they need to contact somebody right away. Yep. Um, any other questions of the applicant? Oh, no, the applicant, no, that's why I, I, I'm sorry, I thought we were back to. No, I'm, I always do that twice. Oh, okay. There being none, any closing comments? Mm -hmm. With that, I'm going to close it to the public and bring it to the board for discussion. Uh, uh, Dean just answered my question was that if we, if should we approve this, I am going to put a, I, I would recommend that we put a condition on it that we have contact information yeah. for um, whoever acts as, a, as the broker. We'll get that. For this. Um, and the other things would be if it's approved to current owners only? Yes. Yeah, I would, I, and, uh, current uh, owners only. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. And this really has nothing to do with this application. It's just me. And it's not even Festivus. Um, <laughs> um, as a general community benefit that rises above the financial gain of the applicant, it's just a clause that I wrestle with in general. It's the, it's the clause that threatens to swallow the ordinance, if you will. 
however, I think they've answered it well in that during that period of time in the summer where there probably is more activity in the general area down there, it is probably beneficial to the community at large for it to be appear to be occupied. In a gated community. In a gated community. That doesn't want a, a walking trail because of mischievous people, so you have no mischievous people. So, I don't know. please don't go there. It's too late. <laughs> I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> if I may, Mr. Chair, I, I, th I think the intention of that portion of the ordinance uh, was to weed out the people who would need a special exception because they don't meet any of the other parts of the ordinance and they've essentially bought the house strictly for the purpose of renting it out. So therefore, the, it's their own, the only that. advantage is their financial gain. And, and, and so it was kind of trying to create a situation where if it's a reasonable use and they're using it as well, I, uh, no, don't I, meet the I other parts of it. I understand the dilemma that, that, yeah. that I'll that this community and other communities have had with with some of the very dynamic that right that you're that you're proposing having said that I'm going to make a motion that we grant a special exception to Jennifer and Olaf Butchma application number Z 02020 for 16 Birdie Way Laconia New Hampshire uh, that the use is required specifically, it is an authorized use under 235.41. Uh, the requested use will not increase demand for municipal services. Um, that the requ that the any special provisions that set forth of this chapter are fulfilled. Uh, in that I guess that it needs one of the reasons it needs a special exception is that it is a little bit bigger than the 1,400 square feet yep. that is allowed by the ordinance by a very small number of square feet. Um, it will not create a hazard to the health, safety, and general welfare of the public as they do use a property manager. However, one of the conditions that I am going to place on this is that we have a contact information for natural retreats. Or any other. Uh, well, and I was also going to say that should natural retreats cease to exist or not, I don't I don't want to make that that this voids this, but that or any subsequent property manager that you use has contact information on record with the planning department before yep. it actually gets rented. Okay? That it that is only to the deeded property owners at this point in time, Jennifer and Olaf Butchma, um, and that um, the applicants ev evidence that granting the special exception is is that they they clearly use the property themselves. They haven't bought this property solely for the purpose of of benefiting financially from being able to rent in the Lakes region during the summertime. Um, And that's that. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. <coughs> Discussion of the motion? There being none, all those in favor of the motion? Okay, it passes. Thank you very much. Remember to see them for your permitting process. Yes. Yep. And that's all? That's it. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Good night. Good have a good night, also. Thank you, Cole. Is there any further business on the board? Dean, you have anything for us? I do not. Gail, do you have anything for us? No, no, I don't. I again thanks to the planning department for 
ensuring our physical safety here and <laughs> having, having the answers to our questions, especially for the two um, short-term rental properties because this is new in uncharted territory and, and he seems to have been as prepared as he can be considering <laughs> as we move forward. Roland, any comments? What's that? Any comments? No, I thought we had a good meeting tonight. And so did I. This is the furthest three of us has ever been. Because <laughs> usually they last about 30 seconds. No one wants to go before three. So I was uh, impressed that everybody wanted to go before the three. So thank you all. Motion to I'll adjourn. make a motion we adjourn. Second. Second. Yay. It passes.